Morning everyone, Ian from DIY Home and Gardening. This is part two, if you like, of my beginner's guide to um, having an allotment or setting up an allotment. And I just sat on my raised bed, admiring the garlic, as you do. And going to be touching on today is to raise beds, growing tunnels, weed fabric, all of that sort of thing. So let's turn the camera around, have a little chat. Okay, kind of feels we're back to story time again. Um, so before we start talking about raised beds and grow tunnels and the like, it's probably worth carrying on with uh, discussing some of the basics. Now, uh, I suppose I'm more aware of this uh, because of my job. So I work in a, a garden centre, run a garden centre. Um, obviously I do YouTube videos, I'm also on Instagram. And it's very apparent that certainly on Instagram and TikTok, not that I'm on there, but um, it's, it's become a little bit of um, a game of one-upmanship who's got the best gadgets, who's got the best tools, greenhouses, uh, you know, whatever. Uh, don't worry about it. That is purely a social media driven thing. You don't need any of it. It's all quite frankly bollocks. Um, what I would suggest you need which again, not all of it's compulsory, but, and some of it will be driven by your plan, you know, where your site access is and where your tap is, and do you have uh, access to a hose pipe? Now, uh, a wheelbarrow, I would say, is a must. It, it's really handy for moving your compost around, your manure around, carting your plants, from point A to where your beds are. Um, if, like me, this plot has no vehicle access, so um, I live down the road, I can either use a wheelbarrow, load up my plants, load up my compost, and walk all the way from the house to here, which would be of a trek, or I can drive, park in the um, nearby roadway, and then get the wheelbarrow out and then barrow the, the plants out. Um, so I've got my wheelbarrow in the in the shed. I've had it for a long time. <clears throat> anyway, a wheelbarrow, very handy, not necessarily compulsory. Some method of watering, so whether that is a hose pipe or a watering can. Hose pipe's only applicable if you're allowed to use a hose on your plot. So again, find that out. A fork, a spade, as in a digging fork or a digging spade. Uh, I tend to use two types of fork, although one is normally sufficient. Uh, you have a what is called a digging fork. Actually, let's go and let's go and have a look. Bear with. Right, let's just move some of this. Make it a bit easier. Okay, forks. Digging fork. Border fork. You'll notice the border fork is much smaller. Now, quite often, let's get down, quite often, it is sold as though a border fork is a lady's fork. Well, that's not true. And indeed, I prefer using a border fork than the big fork. I only use the big fork when I'm moving quantities of manure around or doing a, um, well, a dig over, trying to work out my levels. But generally speaking, a border fork is much handier because you can get into smaller areas and you're not going to be damaging your, your crops when you're using that. And it's plenty deep enough to get out any perennial weed that you might have. Um, the only time that this 
digging fork is better than the border fork is when it comes to lifting potatoes. So there, there are your forks, but if you're just going to buy one, your border fork is going to be a more useful tool. Same on spades. Digging spade, border spade. Exactly the same scenario. One is not designed for men and one is not designed for women. It is practicality and the type of use. Again, oh, this cable keeps falling over. Again, that is far more useful when you're going to be in an allotment growing plenty of crops. It's worth noting that all of these tools have been given to me other than that one. So these were my dad's. That was left on the, the plot. That was also left by the plot, as was that. That was given to me by my friend when he was clearing out his mum's. And this is the only tool here that I've actually bought. Even these ladders were given to me by the, um, the owner of this site when I was doing the tree pruning for him. So, yeah, quite often, there's tools to be had that cost nothing. Um, a rake is useful. You know, these are what's called a soil rake because they have these nice solid tines to them. Don't be confused with the very thin, flexible tines which are designed for a lawn, so you want a soil rake. And that is good for raking soil. It's as simple as that. Now this is very handy to have, not compulsory. And that's a hoe, that's a Dutch hoe. Or you can get a draw hoe. And has a slightly sharpened blade, not too sharp. And you can use that. And the reason it's handy is because it has a long handle. It means that you can do it without having to stoop over and bend. And that just allows you to cut through the base of unwanted plants, as in weeds. Broom, not compulsory. Just handy from time to time, give the place a sweep out. Um, right, montage of spades and forks. Plastic ones are uh, actually my children's ones, um, as are these little ones. They're for my children. Um, but hand fork, really handy. Hand trowel, really handy. There's tape measure handy. Now I'm going to have to move this cardboard again. So there we are. Hose pipe as I'm allowed to use a hose pipe. Well used um, wheelbarrow and kneeling pad handy especially as you start getting older which I am or have bad knees which I do. And that is it. That's all the tools that you require. That's all the tools that you need. And honestly, if you go to a garden centre as opposed to a um, well, a B and Q or whatever, because the garden centre generally is cheaper, um, you'll be able to buy everything that you need for less than 150 pounds brand new but i would say probably closer to 100 pounds and say wheelbarrow is not necessarily compulsory buy a long handled fork as in a border fork border spade hand hand fork hand trowel watering can and if well if the budget stretches get a hoe because that'll make things easier on the back and that's it that's all you need so that's that's my suggestions for very simple setup and that's all you need and you won't go wrong with them you don't need expensive gadgets and you certainly don't need to be then going out and spending fortunes on 
uh, say designer wheelbarrows and uh, telescopic whatever you know get the simplest stuff to start with if you find that actually one tool is um, not performing as it should you know if your spade keeps bending like the end of it keeps breaking and bending then perhaps look to upgrade that it's worth also having a, an ask as to you know any of the other allotmenteers or put a post on Facebook or something if someone's got any old tools that they're, they're getting rid of so all of mine as you've just seen they're all old only bought one of them and that rake that I bought well I bought that probably 30 years ago 25 years ago so you don't need to spend a lot on tools so again don't worry about it you don't need to have everything matching and a brand it's just social media for you so ignore it all get some basic tools and go from there so that's tools done now we can have a look as to other things that you may wish to do within the allotment now when it comes to doing your allotment you got to decide where you want to fall within the camp as in how things are viewed so within social media and well normal media at the moment it's all about being sustainable no dig peat free chemical free and that's fine but that might not be the route you want to go down you might want to carry on using peat you might want to use chemicals um, you might want to dig everything up and that is entirely up to you you might want to use things only once and chuck them in the bin that is your decision so don't worry about what others think now for me I want to be working with the environment want to have clean products as in stuff that I know that I've grown without the use of chemicals as far as possible uh, are going to be more beneficial eating those than what I'm getting from the supermarket equally I don't want to spend my whole life at the allotment weeding and so that is why I've put down this Mipex heavy duty ground sheeting it is nylon I bought it from um, eBay 100 meters for 35 pounds fair amount of money but cheaper than I could get it for through the garden center and certainly when you look as to where the weeds grow on the edges down that pathway it's got nothing it's well worth it to me and I'm happy in the knowledge that actually when this product is finished I can put it in to be recycled uh, within our local centre and it will go under the plastics or in with the recycled plastics so that's one thing ticked off the list you know there's a lot of people just use bark mulching and that's great but you need to apply that every year or every couple of years at least as it will decompose it's squelchy underfoot and it will let the weeds come through and it's expensive you'll need to keep applying it so bear those in mind those extra costs let's sit down sit down on the raised beds raised beds now again they're not compulsory so do not see it as a barrier to entry that in order to have an allotment you need to build raised beds because you don't and again we come back to our basics in the last video it depends really on the circumstances of the plot now this plot here is clay it's on a clay soil it's farmland or ex-farmland I don't know whether 
So you can see all the ruts here. This is from where they're trying to do some stuff a year ago. And it's still left the ruts in here and they're only just dried out. But you can see how wet it is still. And this site sits wet. You know, I've literally just walked over here and the water's come up. So this site sits wet for four or five months of the year. And if it, I was to try and grow things like garlic and onions in the ground here, they would rot. So I didn't, I went down the route of um, doing raised beds and actually the scaffold boards didn't cost a lot because when I had my plot all the way down there, um, my old allotment neighbor, who's a builder, he managed to get a job lot of these old scaffold boards and we paid 120 pounds for 30 boards each. So that's not a lot of money, uh, really, compared to if I was trying to buy them new or get uh, timber from a, a builder's yard or timber merchant. And so, um, yeah, we went with raised beds. And so that just broadened what we could grow. Doesn't mean that you got to do it though. So that's that's worth pointing out. It's also worth pointing out that in order to grow in a raised bed, you need to be able to fill it with something because otherwise they're half empty. They sink to start with. And so that's where I'm working on one at the moment basically incorporating manure to try and add the organic matter in to raise up the, the ground. So they take a lot of filling. Yeah, this one, it's one of the, the first ones. Yeah, so that's, it's gonna take some more filling and the filling can only occur when you've got access to things like manure or wood chip or indeed making your own compost. It takes a while, becomes expensive, or it would be expensive if you were to try and fill these beds from scratch. So again, that's not achievable in your year one. So don't don't look at things you know, don't look at my plot thinking that you can achieve this with no cost in your first year because you can't um, again I filled up these beds here the farmer um, got me 20 ton of uh, soil and I filled up these beds half full with the soil and half with manure and that's how they got to the, the height they are, they're at. These beds down this side are manure with then some of the soil taken from these beds to top them up. It's become, oh yeah, it became very labor intensive and um, somewhat back breaking. Right, I'll just grab this for you to help explain why I have cardboard in the shed. And again, with these beds. So, there are varying different understandings of digging and no dig. And even no dig to start with needs an element of digging because otherwise you got that and you can't really work with that. So I tend to go with a no dig option. And I have done it on um, the last couple of, well, say this plot and the last plot. Now essentially I've got the base layer and 
before I'd put that down, what I'd normally do is a bit of a layer of manure or green, green uh, matter. Put that down below and then put the cardboard on top. Now having the organic matter below the cardboard is going to draw the, the worms up to start feeding on that organic matter. They come into contact with the, the cardboard and also start their way through some of that. On top of the cardboard, more organic matter and then covered over with soil. Now if the soil is like this, full of grass, that is going to need an element of breaking up. It will need an element of digging. Let me just put that down for waiting. So don't worry that you're having to do a bit of digging because in the grand scheme of things, it's not going to make any difference. So that is creating your, your basis, if you like, of a, a crude no dig. If you're doing it to the letter of the law, if you want, then you'd do your organic matter, your cardboard, organic matter, and then put something over the top of it, some soil or compost. Again, uh, if you look at so many of the Instagrammers, I'll, I'll refer to Instagrammers and, well, we we'll, we'll say YouTubers as well, and they, they create this bed with the organic matter and then they just go over it with a lovely layer of fresh compost. Well, that would cost a fortune. I mean, this bed here is six meters long so i would need at least 12 to 15 bags of compost to do a layer of a minor depth across the whole lot and at seven or eight pounds a bag of compost is going to cost a lot of money so um you know that is a, a strict version of no dig whereas mine this at the moment is a bit of a compromise the other beds are definite no dig in as much as they've all been worked through and we've done the, the soil over the top I then do a layer of manure over the top of the surface and that breaks down and that is helping then to form the uh, extra layers if you like of organic matter that's helping to fill that bed and develop a, a good growing structure and nutrient content for the soil. Now the reason that people are switching to no dig as opposed to digging through is the no dig element means that you're not constantly breaking up the soil structure. With a better soil structure you'll get better root zones forming, the moisture content is more balanced because of how the soil structure is, the organic matter gets improved through the continuous application of organic matter to it. Using a dig method then um, if you're digging at the wrong time of year, so if you're digging predominantly in the autumn time with a, a wet soil then you're creating these clods of soil that are sticking together um, and that's not going to improve the soil at all it's actually going to make it worse uh, you knock out the the trapped carbon that is within the, the soil and also break down some of the microorganisms so the no dig method is a better method but as I've shown you, it's not an easy method to start with. You can't just say, I'm going to use a no dig method and expect to have to do no work because you will have to do work. And also with a no dig method, by virtue of the fact you're not digging and by virtue of the fact you're adding more organic matter to the soil, you're going to end up with more weeds forming to the surface but you can see that actually the soil is 
open and crumbly enough that those weeds pull out quite readily. Easy to do. Whereas on this one, let's say which is not, you know, it's much tougher because the soil hasn't got that same structure yet. That's still essentially, um, you know, field agriculture type soil. So there's the differences there. But if you want to dig that through, then that will turn over really quickly and you can break that up quite quickly. Um, but you will be lacking the uh, longevity in the soil and you will have to resort to application of more fertilizers. So, um, in the same vein then, application of organic mulch, if you like, or compost, your own compost. So we've got the mulching there, and then compost bins. So this one here is empty. As you can see because it's all gone onto there and that's quite a nice mixture um, you can see there's flies around it or insects in there because they're feeding on the organic matter so that's all gone onto there this is the other pile and that needs turning so by turning we mean that this lot will get flicked into here so the, uh, the newer stuff will go on to the bottom and the, the stuff at the bottom, which is the uh, oldest stuff, the stuff that is more broken down, well then that will come to the top or it might be usable. Um, all of this, it's all waste product, saves you having to pull out your weeds from there and then cart them all the way home. Use them here. This is well, the remains, as I say, of last year's stuff, or some of last year's stuff. You can see there's a, I did a top coat um, back in the autumn of some manure just to, well, try and uh, bind it together, add in a bit of um, rougher structure to it. But this is the back end of the weeds and whatnot. You can see there, that's from yesterday, the red cabbage where they're no good. They've got on here a bit of artichoke leaf. So it will just help to, um, you know, you're adding the stuff on it will help to provide nutrients, much needed nutrients that can then be used to create your soils, which will help you grow. Those extra nutrients that are in there mean that there's less reliance on having to add any other fertilizers which leads me into here for pretty much everything all i use is manure and the only top up i do is with the fish blood and bone that's it it's my only products i use oh slight variation those two in the pots they're blueberries so they need something different. They need an acid feed. But that's it, that's all I've got. Don't need anything else, and they'll get some great crops. So again, don't worry about having to purchase expensive fertilizers because you don't need them. Okay, so next we've got grow tunnels, which I've set up. You don't need them. That's the first thing to say. The reason that I have the grow tunnels, you know, you can peek through there. It's just to keep out some of the pests. Plenty of people don't have any grow tunnels at all. And to start with, might just use a little bit of insect mesh over the top, depending on what it's for or like here, got a piece of open netting just over the broad beans. So that's just to stop the uh, pigeons getting to the, the plants as they emerged. 
these obviously don't have anything over them. Um, I'll show you the reason for these. So, well, remains of the cabbages. Hasn't stopped the slugs getting in, but here the pigeons have had these ones. So you don't need to have the grow hoops, but it does help. And again, uh, you can buy very expensive purpose-made grow hoops or do what I've done and I've used water pipe and just some crude brackets and then put the fabric over the top. Um, I have got a video that shows how I made these, so I will include that within descriptions of the video. But again, grow hoops is something that is not required, but is something that will be handy and you can evolve towards. So don't feel as though you need to build these from day one because you do not. However, if you do them as I've done them, then you can buy a plastic water pipe from somewhere like Screwfix for about £30 and that will be sufficient to do most of the beds and then the weed, um, the insect fabric get from the garden centre which is again pretty cheap and the timber around it is just tile batten that I've then screwed on so it's all uh, done on a budget compared to purpose-built stuff. Worth thinking about though. Right, okay, so we've covered uh, ground cover, we've covered, covered raised beds, tunnels, tools. The thing to say with all of it is that you don't need to do your raised beds necessarily, you don't need to do your grow tunnels necessarily, although they will help to extend your seasons. All you really need is the tools. From there you can then start developing and evolving other things and we can discuss that in the next video. So if you've got any questions please send them to me, I'll do my best to answer them for you. If you like what I'm doing, then please subscribe to the channel. Don't forget to hit that reminder button so you don't miss out on future videos. And I always say it, enjoy yourself, have fun, try something different. Till next time, bye for now.